Welcome to vSkills, YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about the top interview questions for, corporate social responsibility. So, let's get started. Question number 1. Let us suppose you saw a co-worker doing a dishonest task, what would you do? The answer is, it is suggested to inform the most relevant authorities about specific behaviors witnessed. Else follow the handbook, contract, or past practice concerning handling the potential dishonest behavior. Do not immediately assume that the coworker is guilty of dishonest behavior. It is suggested to use appropriate compliance hotlines if available. You may also contact HR for compliance help. Remember, do not spread the potential dishonest activity news to employees or others and have responsibility for the matter. Question number 2. Does CSR require a paradigm shift? The answer is, organizations should add some add-on philanthropic things and change their strategies and business models and really build the CSR approach into the management accounting and control systems. Indeed businesses have got ambitions related to CSR question but remain how they are going to fulfill these ambitions. Question number 3. What should the relationship between a supervisor and their employee with reference to an ethical standpoint? The answer is, most importantly the relationship should be an honest, open, and trusting one such that questions can be asked and opinions can be expressed without concern of retaliation. Question number 4. Share your experience when you have experienced a loss for doing something right? The answer is, loss can be expressed in terms of fundamentalism, social institutions, moral agency or virtuous organizations such that. Fundamentalism, financial and legal responsibility only business of business is profit. Social institutions, social contract exists beyond economics and legalities. Need to accommodate stakeholders' interests. Moral agency, moral obligations similar to people. Morality and ethics are part of the culture, the right thing to do. Virtuous organizations, organizations that foster a good society. Obligation to build a better world. Question number 5, what is corporate responsibility? The answer is, the business activity itself is concerned by the core element of corporate responsibility, the function of business in society is to yield adequate returns to owners of capital by identifying and developing promising investment opportunities and, in the process, to provide jobs and to produce goods and services that consumers want to buy. Economic history attests to the power of business sectors operating in effective private and public governance environments to raise general welfare and living standards. Question number 6. What does the ISO 26000 standard focus on? The answer is, ISO 26000 focuses on social responsibility. It is defined as the international standard developed to help organizations effectively assess and address social responsibilities that are interlinked with their mission and vision. Question number 7. Who introduced a model of strategization of CSR? The answer is, Jar Zabkowski introduced a model of strategization of CSR. Question number 8. How many dimensions of CSR are defined by Carroll? The answer is, there are four dimensions of CSR. Economical. Legal. Ethical. And philanthropic responsibilities. Question number 9. What do you understand by reputational capital? The answer is, reputational capital signifies the value created by a firm's image in a stakeholder's mind because of their interaction with the organization. Reputational capital can be related to positive outcomes in firms, such as customers' intention to buy a service, attraction for employees' employees' strong identification with the organizations. Also, strong corporate reputations help organizations to win the war of talent and foster employee retention. Question number 10. What does the FTSE 4 Good Index evaluates? The answer is, FTSE 4 Good Index evaluates the performance of companies to meet globally recognized corporate responsibility standards. Question number 11. Why do managers tend to retain free cash flow? The answer is, managers may not be acting in the shareholder's best interest, and for a variety of reasons, want to use the free cash flow. Question number 12. What is greenwashing? The answer is, Greenwashing also called a green sheen is a form of marketing spin in which green PR and green marketing are deceptively used to persuade the public that an organization's products, aims and policies are environmentally friendly. Question number 13. What is the triple bottom line? The answer is, triple bottom line is an accounting tool that looks at the impact on people, planet, and profits. Question number 14. How risk can be managed in an organization? The answer is, Managing risk is a central part of many corporate strategies. 
Reputations that take decades to build up can be ruined in hours through incidents such as corruption, scandals or environmental accidents. These can also draw unwanted attention from regulators, courts, governments and media. Building a genuine culture of doing the right thing within a corporation can offset these risks. Question number 15. What is the difference between CSR and sustainability? The answer is, CSR tends to target opinion formers. Politicians, pressure groups, media. CSR is becoming about compliance. Sustainability targets the whole value chain. From suppliers to operations to partners to end consumers. Sustainability is about business. Question number 16. Suppose if you are new to a company that doesn't have an ethics or compliance program, then where would you start for information? The answer is, first, on a search engine, type ethics programs or compliance programs. Then, find existing ethics compliance programs published through Commerce Clearing House, the Bureau of National Affairs, etc. Then, check your local library for ethics books and texts. Now, check the Journal of Business Ethics. Question number 17. How would you handle employee complaints about the dimension of sexual orientation under diversity policy? The answer is, according to the Hewlett-Packard case, a company has a right to enforce such diversity policy. Question number 18. Suppose you have an opening for which the former employee is qualified. Should you post the position? The answer is, in such cases, one should first find the employee handbook, contract, and legal constraints with reference to job openings. Question number 19. How would you deal with employee handbook policies that have contradictory values? The answer is, if the handbook is inadequate then there are several other ways to deal with contradictions such as, consider past practice. Consider the costs that are financial, social, ethical, etc., of doing things in different ways. Consider joint recollection of what the parties intended to mean when the handbook was written. Consider letters of understanding you explaining the handbook policies. Consider what is done by other arbitrators, companies, or court cases in, or similar, situations. Consult with management and human resource management concerning potential contradictory policies. Question number 20. Your colleagues including your boss believe that you do not measure up to the performance. What would you do in this case? The answer is, find out what specific behaviors are inadequate. Even if the impressions are wrong about you, do not retaliate. Question number 21. For monitoring employee movement, how far is too far within and outside the confines of the company? The answer is, there should always be a balance between the need to know information about the whereabouts of employees and the need for privacy. Keep up with employee handbook policies and laws concerning this matter. Question number 22. One of your employee who is using the computer in an unethical way, so, how would you handle this situation? The answer is, follow handbook, past practice or contract concerning handling the potential dishonest behavior. Don't just immediately assume that the supervisor is guilty of his dishonest behavior. If available then use appropriate compliance hotlines. Contact human resources for compliance help also, try not to spread the potential dishonest activity news to employees or others who do not have re-responsibility for the matter. Question number 23, what is creating shared value approach? The answer is, creating shared value approach is a strategy for developing the future market while strengthening economies the marketplace and communities. It creates an interdependence of long-term business success on balanced social systems. It encourages organizations to strategically invest in environmental conservation, social welfare, education and healthcare creating opportunities for overall long-term growth. Question number 24. What are the two kinds of committee structures? The answer is, two kinds of committee structure are. First, a single committee known as a board of directors is the method favored in most common law countries. Under this model the board of directors is composed of both executive and non-executive directors, the latter being meant to supervise the former's management of the company. Second, a two-tiered committee structure with a supervisory board and a managing board is common in civil law countries. Question number 25. What is Occupational Health and Safety Advisory Services Standard? The answer is, Occupational Health and Safety Advisory Services 18001 is applicable to any organization which aims to establish a health and safety management system at work. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.